Are you looking for a more flexible and customizable way to collect information in the Stripe checkout flow? If so, I've got really, really great news. Our team just recently added the ability for you to add custom fields to the Stripe checkout payment flow. You can now collect text, numeric, and drop-down values directly in the payment flow for Stripe checkout, which is really, really exciting because it unlocks tons of use cases, both with payment links and the pricing table that you can configure through the dashboard with no code at all. And also if you are using Stripe checkout directly through the API, you can add these custom fields for one-time payments or subscriptions. They're not available for setup mode, but you can use them in lots of different use cases and for your business. Oftentimes people need to maybe collect a company name in addition to the payment details, or maybe a t-shirt size, or they wanna have some custom engraving or drop downs for different flavors or things like that. And so what we're gonna do today is go through the process of adding custom fields to a couple different checkout flows and you'll get to see how you can add them to your API calls and also how we can add them with no code. Let's get into it. So I've jumped into the Stripe dashboard here under the product section, and I've already got a couple different products set up that we're gonna to use today. If you haven't already created some products and prices for your business, head over and take a look at the modeling your business with products and prices. This is an example of a professional product that is gonna recur. So you're gonna, you can charge $18 a month or $180 a year. The important information that we need from this page is the ID of the price. Now what we can do is jump into our code. All right, so on the server, I have this post route for creating a checkout session. Here's our API call to create a checkout session. We're passing in some arguments, the first of which is a mode. In this case, we're gonna start a brand new subscription to collect recurring payments. And we're using that recurring pro price here. We're gonna take the quantity in from the front end, set a success and cancel URL to which the customer will be redirected after they finish the payment flow. Finally, we are redirecting. I'm gonna open up the terminal here and run npm run start and head over to the browser and go to localhost 4242. So we have a simple example up and running. Now, technically we're going to click this button and subscribe. So this is going to allow us to start a new subscription. Now by default, there aren't any custom fields over on the right side. So what we wanna do is add a new custom field. So inside of our API call to create a checkout session, we have this new property that we can pass. This is an argument called custom underscore fields, and this takes in an array. Now, technically you can pass up to two custom fields. So we've got a limit here of two. The first thing we wanna do with each custom field is specify a key. So in this case, we're gonna collect the company name. So we're gonna just call this custom field company. Now we also need a label. The type of label is gonna be a custom label and the value here is gonna be custom or, and we're gonna call this a company name. Now the company name, this is gonna be like the actual value that people will see in the UI for the label there. Next, we wanna also set the type. In this case, we're gonna set it to text. There's three different types of custom fields. You have text fields, numeric fields, and dropdown lists. Text fields and numeric fields can both receive up to 255 characters. In the case of a numeric, you're gonna have up to 255 digits. For text, it's just 255 of uh, text. And then for dropdowns, you can have up to 200 options in your dropdown list. So this is how we can get started with custom fields. You may need to restart the server after making a change like that. We'll go back to our demo here and say we wanna restart. We'll click on buy one more time to go through that subscription flow. And now on the right side, you'll see that we have a company name. So if we tried to click on subscribe without entering the name, you'll notice that this is required. So if we don't want the field to be required, we can talk about how we can make that optional. So let's go back over here. And one of the ways that we can modify these custom fields is by passing optional true. And that will make it so that this custom field is not required at checkout. Let's restart the demo and take another look. So now if we go through and we click on buy, now you'll notice that this is an optional field. It's, it's highlighted pretty well that it is optional. But for now, let's put in uh, our company name is Acme Corp and we'll say subscribe. Now, when we're redirected back to the success page, we're gonna re-retrieve that checkout session and render its JSON. So this is the JSON for the checkout session uh, this is uh, either if you retrieve the checkout session by its ID, which we're doing so here with the ID and the query string value, 
Um, you get back the custom fields. You also get back not only the the custom fields that you passed in, right? We're gonna we're here. We're seeing the key. We're also seeing the label information. The additional info that we see after someone submits is the values for what they filled in. So here we can pull out Acme Core from uh, from the custom field data that is on the checkout session after they go through the payment flow. This is also available in the webhook handler. So if you're listening for webhooks, specifically that checkout session created webhook event, you can pull out the values that folks are typing in as they go through your payment flow. Okay, cool. Let's look at another example. In this case, let's comment out a recurring pro price and comment in our 10K race. In the case of the race, it's gonna be a one-time payment. We only hold this race annually. So we're gonna switch our checkout session mode to payment. And this is gonna be for a one-time payment. Now the custom field in this case is not gonna be the company. We don't care about the company name. In this case, we want the size. And this is specifically gonna be a t-shirt size for the runners so that they can you know, display that they went and did this race. Uh, instead of having text, we don't want people to enter text for the t-shirt size because someone might enter S, another person might enter small, another person might enter small with all capitals, or, you know, uh, someone might throw in extra medium or some value that isn't actually one of the, the sizes. And so what we want to do here is set this as a drop down, and then we want to specify some options. So those go in the drop down argument. And inside of the drop down argument here, we have some options, and this takes in an array of options. So we don't wanna make this optional. We do wanna require that people tell us their t-shirt size. Now in the options, we can specify a label and this might be like small and the value for that might be S. We're also gonna want medium and large. Now obviously runners vary in size much more than that, but for the sake of example, we'll keep it simple here. So now we have three different options. So we'll save that. So we're gonna head back over to our demo at localhost 4242 type that in, hit buy, and this should let us sort of register for the race. So here we, we see our you can do it 10K race. <laughs> the faster you run, the sooner you get to eat pancakes. So what we want to do now is select our t-shirt size. So now we can pick, you know, small, medium, or large. Uh, I, I would say that I would like a large t-shirt and I'm going to click on pay. This will require that we select a t-shirt size. And also now we're being redirected back through this, um, through this flow. And again, we can see the custom fields that we passed in and also the value that was selected. So in this case, large was selected. So that's the value that we see there. So this is uh, really, really powerful. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here we're going to add back in our penguin float. And this is the price ID for this giant floaty penguin that goes in the pool. Now, rather than collecting the size or a dropdown, what we want to do this time is collect some delivery instructions because this thing is so massive that it's going to come on a pallet and our drivers really need to know where they're dropping off this giant floating penguin. We're also going to include a numeric value because we have a really complex ordering system and we need to make sure that the orders that folks are entering online are actually tied back to this ordering system. So here what we're going to do is we'll first start with delivery. So this is going to be some like delivery instructions and the type of this first field is going to be text. Now we're going to remove the entire dropdown and we're going to add a second field in here for the, uh, the like order number or invoice number. So we're going to call it order and this will be, what is your order number? And for now, this is just numeric. We're only going to allow numeric values to be passed in for the order number. Again, both of these are required and let's go through the flow. So we're going to restart our demo. We're going to say we want to buy this inf giant inflatable penguin. And there it is, $299. And we have some delivery instructions, like uh, maybe like, please leave it near the pool in the backyard. And then the order number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I guess that's a real order number that we got in some <laughs> email notification or something um, that our custom made giant inflatable penguin is ready to go. All right, so now we have our custom fields. We have the value, please leave it near the pool in the backyard, that's great. And we also have our, our order number here, which is this numeric value. So that is how we can add a bunch of different custom fields, but it's easier than that. If you're in the dashboard and you're creating a payment link with no code at all, let's go back to our you can do it race. Here we can say, we wanna create a payment link for this race. Right here, we can say we wanna add custom fields Maybe we want to add a drop down, and again, we want small, uh, medium, and large options for our t shirt sizes. And this is going to be t shirt size. 
And now we can see, even in the preview, we can already see that this is uh, coming to life directly for the payment link. This is all gonna be uh, done with no code at all. So we can click create link. Now we have a payment link that I can copy and navigate to. And again, we're gonna see sort of the same payment flow, but now we have a t-shirt size that we can pick. So we can click on pay and we're off to the race or the races. Finally, I wanted to show you, this is really cool. So in addition to working with payment links and checkout directly, you can also set custom fields inside of a pricing table. So here we have a pricing table. It's got some weird or some funky colors right now. So let's go over here and show you what um, in the payment settings for each of these options, you can add custom fields. So again, just like with the payment link uh, inside of the pricing table, you can add text numbers or drop downs to the checkout flow. Some words of caution, please, please, please do not collect any data that is personal, sensitive, or protected in any way. And you also don't want to use these fields to collect any information that is restricted by a law. So be thoughtful when you're using these custom fields, but for the most part, any text, numeric, or drop down values that you want to uh, add in there that conform to the maximum 255 characters of text, 255 digits for numeric, or 200 options in the drop down list. This is really powerful stuff. We're super excited to see what you'll build. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.